Welcome. Welcome to worship on this Good Friday, the lowest point in the Christian calendar, the time when we feel the loss. Last night we observed Maundy Thursday. We shared a meal and communion. And now, really, the service continues as we lead into Good Friday singing the Last Supper. And so the choir joins me and we offer you this anthem. One candle was left burning, but I forgot again to light it this morning. On Christmas Eve, we lit a candle to celebrate the birth of Christ and the renewal it symbolized for the world. And we stand in the flame of that candle now. As we relive and reflect Upon the events of Jesus' death this day, we extinguish the Christ candle to remind us that even in shadow times such as this, death will not have the last word. 
These hard times will not last forever. There will be a new dawn. Amen. And so we respond singing. to lead us in the acknowledgement of the territory. In this place of worship, we are joined together with all the people of Treaty 1 in the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We acknowledge the failures of the past, offer hope for the future, commit to living together in peace, and strive to bring joy and love into our relationships. As we strive to walk in faith and peace with our brothers and sisters, we also pledge to create a sacred space of welcome where all people might find a home. We'll do our part to seek reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous brothers and sisters as we walk together in peace and harmony. We will welcome all people as beloved children of God. So just a reminder that Sunday is Easter. I'm sure you don't need one, but uh, we are here at 10.30 uh, with communion. And... You are all welcome to attend. This service focuses on the readings from John. We have not, not reading the whole long story, but most of it. And we will have singing, we will have prayers, we will have reflection, all focused on those readings. And so we enter into worship singing our gathering song. to worship responding with the words in yellow today is a day to remember shadowed times and places yet we know that death does not have the last word Our opening prayer is a responsive prayer, so once again I ask you to respond with the words in yellow, let us pray. Anointed one, so grateful are we for your willingness to experience such pain and suffering for our sakes. It is our prayer that no more people should suffer as you suffered. May those who thirst not receive bitter offerings. 
May those who are alone and afraid We wait for your embrace in our silent prayer. Let us all say. Our opening hymn is O oh, Love, How Deep, it's 348 and Voices United, and we sing verses 1 through 5. I invite you to rise as you are able and sing. Gracious God, the journey through Lent calls us to walk a new path. We ask that through word and song you light our path and guide us in your way. Amen. Cheryl reads for us the first part of the gospel story. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because often he often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. He replied, I am he. Judas, who had betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. 
Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these people go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave, the slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your soul, sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? And we offer an anthem.
the story continues. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since the disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Now Peter, Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. It is not hard to understand why Peter might deny knowing Jesus. He is inside the courts of power and control. To admit he is a follower might put him on trial with Jesus and beside him on the cross. He and the other disciples were lucky enough to get away from the garden when Jesus was arrested. At that time, the authorities were only looking for Jesus. It seemed like a good assumption that when the leader of a peaceful movement died, the movement would die with him. But if you are in the court with him, and identifying yourself as his follower it seems likely you would be arrested too. This is more than guilt by association. This is power being visible, a signal to others. And that must be stopped. It is still happening today. When Jesus says Peter will deny him, I sometimes wonder if it was more of a command than a prediction. Jesus knew how his life would end, but he needed people to carry on the message, to share it on and on and on. That is how his sacrifice would mean something, and that is how his sacrifice would change the world. Peter was the acknowledged leader of the disciples. If he died along with Jesus, how much more difficult would it have been to continue? They had already lost Judas, and aside from Peter, it seems like those most determined to share the message were the women. Would they have been listened to in that time and in that place? Maybe the message would have continued to spread. Maybe it would have taken longer. We can't know. What we can know is that the message continues to spread and we are called not only to share it but to live it out. We are in a part of the world where that is less risky than some others. We should use the privilege we have to work toward peace and healing in God's creation. Let's continue the story as Cheryl begins to re continues to read for us. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's quarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter their headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, Did others tell you to ask me? about me. Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, 
my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into this world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs in the, to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? We sing, beneath the cross of Jesus, it's 135 and Voices United. I invite you to rise as you are able and sing. just said, what is truth? The trial continues. After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a rebel. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. Let us pray. Is this how far we have come, God? 
We find no case against him, but kill him anyhow. How is it that power, control, and stability is more important than an innocent life? More important than any life? Jesus gave up his life to make that point, yet we continue to fail to learn it. Guide us, creator of life, not to value it in others so little as we fight so hard against death for ourselves. Remind us of the many times Jesus told us to love one another and that he called it both a new commandment and part of the greatest commandment. He even said, love your enemies, because it is only through love that enemies become friends. But for now, the verdict is in and an innocent man will die so others can live, so we all can live. We live in hope that your great love will in time overcome all that divides us against each other. Amen. Cheryl continues the story for us. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself up against Caesar. Then Pilate, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed them o- him over to them to be crucified. Victoria offers us a gift of music.
The verdict is in. And so we hear what happens next. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. The crowd declares that they have no king but Caesar. Over their protests, Pilate puts a sign on Jesus' cross that says, King of the Jews. It's a clear indication that he wants them to know that Rome is more powerful than Israel. Not only has he killed their king, he has told them he gets to decide who their king is. Their claim of allegiance to Caesar has put Jesus on the cross, but it has gained them nothing more. They are still an oppressed people in an occupied land. The priests might see it differently. But to me, their idea that it is better that one die to save the others is both ironic and a complete failure. Not only are the people suffering the same as they were, Jesus really does die to save us, all of us. Not the way the temple authorities expected, but certainly the way God works. It is up to us to accept that saving grace. It is up to us to live out and love out Jesus' call. Though the story will live on tomorrow, let us hear how it ends for today. As Cheryl reads us, reads more for us. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. And a jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sp sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Hard words to hear. And we sing, When I survey the wondrous cross, 149 and voices united. And perhaps this time we can stay seated for singing. Yeah. 
Jesus is dead, but the story doesn't end there. There's still more to hear today, and of course, much more to hear on Sunday. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. These are God's words for the journey. Let us pray. It is finished. The light of Christ has been extinguished. Like the women at the tomb, like Jesus' family and friends, like all the other disciples, we grieve. We grieve the loss of Jesus, and we grieve our sense of separation from you, God. We pray for our systems to change and to be part of working toward that change. Most of all, we pray for your light, your act of creation to re-enter our lives. Your Son, Jesus, changed the world, but so much more change is needed. It is not enough to change ourselves. We must also work to free others to change and to change the structures that keep us from living according to your love. It is finished for today, but we still hope for tomorrow. We look forward to the time when we will once again know your presence with us as we pray for the healing and wholeness and holiness that you offer. Turn our prayers from words into actions. Bless our journey, we pray. We continue to pray, saying together the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is 136 in Voices United, O Come and Mourn with Me a While.
now may God, who keeps our going out and our coming in from this time forth and evermore, hold you and hold you tenderly, wipe your tears, let hope be reborn in you, and heal your hearts with the blessing of love this day and forevermore. Go out to share the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the sustaining fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and always. Amen. Peace be with you.